Uh, welcome to our very first episode from Chapter 8. And in Chapter 8, we're going to learn about photosynthesis. But in this episode, we're going to revisit what is energy, what's the difference between autotrophs and heterotrophs, what forms of energy are living things going to use, and then we're going to revisit ATP, which we covered in a previous series of screencasts. So nothing too difficult in this screencast, but we're, we're setting the stage to learn about photosynthesis. So let's first start off with what the heck is energy? Energy is defined as anything that has the ability to do work. So doing work here. Think of like when, when you're doing your chores at home. You know, if you live on a farm, you've got to go out and take care of the cows, or you got to go out and work in the garden, or even if you live in a suburban neighborhood where you have to go mow your lawn, that takes energy to do that stuff. Right? So it takes energy to shovel the, uh, the hay in the farm, and it takes energy to push the lawnmower. So you've got to put forth an effort, and that requires energy. Now, living things come in two forms, and it really depends on how do they obtain energy to do their work. And it's they're called autotrophs and heterotrophs. I'm going to change my color here. Let's pick red. There we go. All right. Auto basically means the same, and troph means to eat. So let's write this down here to eat. And so the word auto means the same. So think of like you're eating yourself. And then hetero, that means different. So I'm going to write over the top of these. Okay? So you're eating something different than you. You're eating another organism. So you want to make sure you put a little star next to this. This is pretty basic information, but right here it tells you what it is. Autotrophs make their own food. And they're going to make their own food through one of two things. Photosynthesis, which is what this chapter is about. Uh, that is, well, it looks like it's misspelled a little bit. And we have what is called chemosynthesis. All right. Chemosynthesis. Well, let me back up here. Photo, you're using light. So you're using light to make your food. And then chem chemo means you're using chemicals. Okay, and these chemicals are typically coming from a volcanic activity. So chemosynthesis occurs down deep in the bottom of the ocean where those are volcanic vents. Doesn't happen a lot on this, on this planet, but when it does happen, it's pretty, pretty important, pretty cool. Uh, almost everything at the bottom of a food chain starts with photosynthesis, and this would be through plants. Heterotrophs? can't make your own food, so you got to go eat something. So every human being is a, a heterotroph. In fact, every animal is a heterotroph. Every fungus is an, a heterotroph. Every, uh, well, most protists are. Some protists are photosynthetic. Of course, all plants are. Now, when it comes to bacteria, most are heterotrophs, but a few are photosynthetic, but not a ton of them. All right, living things must use chemical energy to do work. There's things like kinetic energy, chemical energy, potential energy. Living things use the chemical form. Because everything that happens in your body happens because of chemistry. We learned that in Chapter 2 when we studied chemistry. So uh, if you're new to my series of, of, of screencasts, hit the Chapter 2 playlist. You'll learn all about the chemistry of life, the biochemistry. All right. Chemical energy is found in actually two places. Number one is electrons. Let's pick a color here. That's blue. Let's go with green. There we go. Okay, electrons. If you remember what electrons are, they're the negative particles that are going around an atom. Okay, now they are found in energy levels. So this is the nucleus. We'll pick a different color here. There we go. And here's the first energy level, and there's the second energy level. So this is a Bohr's model. So this one's got two electrons, and we'll just say out here we got four. So this is a carbon atom, by the way. All right. Now, this electron can go from this level to that level. It can hop up and down. When it gains energy, it's going to pop up. But that's unstable. It doesn't like to be in that level, so it may pop down. So when it pops down, it can release light. So let's pick a, we'll see, red's two. Okay, so if this goes up and then it falls back down it's going to release light and so any light bulb that you have you have electrons going up and down up and down up and down and every time they go down light is shot out all right chemical bonds is another one here 
Uh, let's go back to purple, which would be two. Oops, that's one. I'm sorry. There we go. Chemical bonds are a great place to find energy. And we talked about this again in chapter two. When you make a bond, you store energy. So remember when you make, that's anabolic. Remember, Anna builds, and that is also an endergonic reaction. It should all be a review. Uh, endergonic means bringing energy in, and anabolic means you're building molecules. When you break a bond, that releases energy. So that is going to be catabolic. Remember, the cat breaks and releases. And you can also say that it's exergonic. Exergonic is a word that means energy goes out. All right. So it's all kind of review. Okay, electrons store energy as they go up and down. They're either going to gain energy. And as they go down, they emit the energy. And chemical bonds, anabolic, catabolic. So once again, just review stuff that we've had before. All right, ATP is one of the most important chemicals that you have in your body. It's used to store energy and transfer it within a... Uh, chemical reaction. And ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Basically, it's a special nucleotide. There's your sugar, your phosphates, and your bases. But these energy, these bonds right there, these are what we call high, whoops, almost misspelled energy, high energy phosphate. I'm going to run out of room here. Phosphate bonds. Okay. So when you pop off this first one, you release the most energy. When you pop off the second one, you release a little bit more energy, and you hardly ever pop off this third one, although you can, all right? So this is the molecule that's used to transfer energy from an anabolic reaction to a, or I'm sorry, I had it backwards, from a catabolic reaction to an anabolic reaction. ATP is used to move energy around within your cells. All right, one more to go. The ATP ADP cycle. And basically it works like this. All right. You've got ATP over here, and it's going to release energy. And when it releases energy, it becomes ADP plus a P. Okay? And then when it gains energy, it goes back to ATP. So let's pick a different color here. Let's go with that one. There we go. So this would be release energy and this one would be gain energy all right so this arrow right here this is going to be the catabolic slash exergonic because you're releasing energy and then this arrow right down here, that's your anabolic slash endergonic. Okay, so adenosine diphosphate, di means two. So you have one, two phosphate, and there's a phosphate that broke off. So you add energy. So we're gonna say anabolic. And that makes ATP triphosphate. So this is like a fully charged battery when you're at your ATP. All right, now if we were to go this way, we would be catabolic or exergonic, and your battery is half charged. In other words, you spent some of it and you used it. Okay, that's going to end this episode. Uh, we've got, let's see, we have a total of seven in this series. So until next time, we'll catch you on the flip side.